stream. Yep. And mm -hmm. I guess I go, do I go got it? Yeah. There we go. Then redirecting to Facebook live page. Perfect. Oh, awesome. So that shows on my Facebook page. We are live. Um, I'm going to start letting people in. And as people come in, we will also try to mute them. Perfect. Awesome. Great. Wonderful. So um, we're going to start because it's eight o'clock. It's a Wednesday night. People know that usually on Wednesdays, Zibunisa goes live. And then as people join us in, they will just, um, I guess, join us in or watch a recap as they come in. So hello, everyone. Good evening. Who doesn't know me? My name is Zibuniso Alimova. I'm a mortgage advisor for Wellington region. And I own a franchise between Wellington and Capiti. I've uh, been around for over 10 years in the financial industry. I worked in a bank and now I own my franchise and I love it. So tonight I've got uh, an amazing guest speaker. I've got Rose Acton Adams. She is from Liberty Finance. And what she's gonna tell us about is if you had for any reason, and we're gonna talk about the reasons, but for if for any reason the bank turned you down, what can you do to turn a no into a yes? So Rose, take it away, introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what you do, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for having me, firstly. It's great to, um, to be here. And as you know, I love educating um, mortgage advisors, but um, even more love ed educating the um, Marat, can you please mute yourself? Hello. <laughs> I love it. I love when this thing happens. Friday, Friday, it's um, Wednesday night entertainment. <laughs> anyway, sorry, back to me again, because I'm the guest speaker. Um, I was just saying thanks for having me. My background, I've been in the lending industry for over uh, 20 years. I have been an advisor, uh, the same as Ebenuso. I've also run um, mortgage companies. And now I am working for Liberty, and we are a specialist lender. Liberty is an Australian-based company. So over there, we have 500 staff, and in New Zealand, we have 20 staff. Our main reason which we came to New Zealand 20 years ago was because we realized that many of the traditional banks were getting tougher and saying no um, to people wanting to purchase a house. So there are many of us uh, second tier lenders in the market. Ultimately, it's great to get a, a main bank loan. Um, obviously, the rate is cheaper. But if they do say no, which we're going to go through some of the reasons soon, it's great to get a mortgage advisor involved because their service is generally free. They're doing the running around for you and they're looking for the solution and the opportunity. And it's not a long, it's not a long term thing. It's basically any specialist lender is to like get you in and a better position, sort you out with your financials or your credit and then move you back to main bank um, in the long term. So what I thought that I would initially do is just give you an idea of, of why a bank may be declined from a loan or uh, uh, sorry, a loan may be declined from the bank or deferred from the bank, which is when Liberty um, or another specialist lending company will get a phone call from a mortgage advisor and say, look, can you help this client? So some of these reasons you may have heard yourselves or you may be facing. Um, so afterwards, feel free to ask me any questions. So the first thing that Liberty look at is we actually don't deal directly with um, with the public. So it's always through a, a mortgage advisor like Zebanoso. So we can look to do purchasing of properties, whether it's your first property or an investment property. We can look to refinance your current mortgage, um, but we can also do debt consolidation. 
So some of the reasons where the bank will say no is you may have um, a something on your credit check, and I, I'm a firm believer that you know that some um, bad things can happen to good people. So when I mean on your credit check, it may be in the past that something's happened with you, and you've ended up with a default or a, a judgment um, or a. Um, a blemish on your credit report, whether that was um, missing a sky bill, whether you had bad finance with a car company, um, or just a light, something that happened in life that was uncontrollable to you. The bank and any lender will do a credit check on you and they will look to see if there are any defaults or collections. When you're lending at a high level, and by that what I mean is having a, um, a smaller deposit, the bank are fussier. And to be fair, we're also fussier because we're looking at the risk of the client of how much money we're lending um, versus how much money you are putting towards the deposit of the property. So if you have impaired credit, then that is a, uh, a definitely a second tier lender option. Um, the second thing that I see a lot of is self-employed people. And this is a big space that I play in a lot on. So there are um, many types of different self-employed people. And the bank generally ask for two years um, of good financial trading accounts. Now, sometimes it's not possible to provide a good two years because you may have only been a startup company. You may have been using a lot of your money coming in to purchase stock and equipment. So when the bank look at your cash flows, they're thinking, oh, goodness, their net profit's a bit low. So we have a, um, a product called a low doc product. And rather than looking at your financials, and that's even if you have financials, because some people um, are cash people. Uh, the bank certainly don't like that, that you're you know, maybe a mechanic or maybe a plumber and you're doing some cashies on the side and that you can't actually show that in your financial accounts. So we have a low dot product where we use a common sense approach and we look at the deposits and withdrawals going in and out of your business bank statement. And then we actually talk to your accountant and we get a letter from your accountant to back up the self-declared income that you're, you're declaring. And again, you may only be with us for a year or for two years, and that could be waiting while you're getting your financials in order or your business is in growth mode. So in a year to 18 months, the mortgage advisor, Zebanoso, we can refinance you back to main bank. So for that risk of us taking on that lending and sort of like a guesstimate of, of what you're earning, the, the rates in specialist lending are going to be higher. Okay, there's no way around that because it is a riskier product, but it gets you on the ladder and we can also look to do um, interest only um, payments for you. Another area that I uh, come across is people that, uh, the bank generally like to see that customers have saved 5% of the purchase price of the um, house that they're purchasing. The reason they like this is they, they call it hurt money. So they like to see that your characteristic is able to save some money um, to put towards your biggest asset the and your biggest dream. So, Sometimes there's some very lucky people out there that get the whole lot gifted from parents or it might be a family member or a trust or it might be from an overseas inheritance. Banks don't generally like that the whole lot has been given or gifted in this way or they've acquired the deposit. We don't mind where the deposit has come from. Um, so that is another solution where um, I will see loan applications come from. Also, um, another area where the bank, um, especially lending at a high level where there's a smaller deposit, they're not so keen on people being on a residence visa. So the only visa that, that currently Liberty don't take, and this is not all specialist lenders, is a work visa or, a, or as a um, partnership visa. But if you have a residence visa and it says indefinite and it has an expiry date, then that's absolutely um, acceptable to us. One, um, another area that I see a lot of, um, especially in the younger generation coming through, is that they have a lot of short-term debt. 
Um, I think back in my day, we were all taught to save for everything and then you went out and brought it, um, like a car or a new lounge suite for your house or your new TV. But a lot of the, a lot of the youth these days, gosh, I sound like an old person, a lot of the youth now have everything on tick, whether it's Gem credit card, it's Harvey Norman, it's Smith City, um, it's a personal loan. And even though their incomes might be fantastic, the bank kind of sometimes think, oh gosh, these people have got a bit of bit of um, appetite for short-term debt and we're about to give them, for example, 500,000. How are they going to afford 500,000 and all these other repayments that are coming out? Um, as long as it was services with us and you haven't got, you know, 70 different short-term debts, then we will actually be okay to look at that. Um, one of the other areas is the Kianga or a home loan or the old what was known as the welcome home loan. Um, if sometimes you may not fit the criteria and there's three key criteria that I tend to pick up of clients that have not fitted the bank or the Kianga or a home loan criteria and that is because they are wanting to purchase over cap. Um, and Zebanoso, maybe you can talk about the, the caps um, later in your area. Um, so you're not eligible for the grants because you're wanting to buy over the, the Kianga or a house cap, or you may not have been in your job long enough. You might have just started at, been in a job for two months and they like to see um, that you've been in it for 12 months. Um, or you also may be earning too much um, to be eligible. Um, what's another good thing that I see? Um, if I go back to the self-employed um, self area, there's a product that um, if any of you are listening and, and maybe um, tradies, you may think, gosh, there's a product out there for me. So I see a lot of um, self-employed people that have, have been PAYE on wages with a company. And I'm just, I'm just going to use an electrician as an example. And he was on wages. You might have been on wages and thought, right, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm going to go out on my own and I'm going to start up my own company. And you've been a couple of months into it and it's going really well and you're thinking i'm so glad i made this decision to work for myself and you go to a bank and they say goodness you've only been trading two months uh, we're not really getting a feel for the business uh, there's nothing stability that, that that we can go on so liberty will actually look um it, it's quite an interesting scenario liberty will actually use your past ird return for the year when you were PAYE, because our mentality is that if it all turned to custard going out being your own um, self-employed electrician, that you can always go back to a PAYE role in that same industry. So to give you some other examples of people that um, Liberty have helped with that, um, and I'm based in Christchurch. So last week I helped a lady that was a hairdresser and she was cutting hair from a salon in Christchurch, but she went home um, to be a stay-at-home mother and cut hair from home. And she also wanted to um, refinance her mortgage, but she wanted some cash out for her business um, to get the business up and running and buy the, the hairdressing, um, just basically fit out the hairdressing salon. So we needed to refinance her mortgage away from Westpac. Um, and we gave her $40,000 extra for the fit out of the salon and all I used was her last IRD return from when she was working as an employee um, at the hairdressing salon. So Rose can we just recap so you can help people that are self-employed mm -hmm. you can also help people that um, have jobs but got low deposit or issues with their deposit yeah, um, and you can help people that have permanent residencies. You can't help people that have work visas or partners visas or skilled migrant visas. You are correct. Such. And can we just recap about deposits? What sort of deposits do those different groups will need? Because they will need different kinds of deposits. Okay, okay. That, that's a, that's a great question. And when I'm going to try and and relay this in. Um, in English, um, to, to, to think back to when I was looking at purchasing a house rather than me talking the, the banking criteria. So in layman's terms, the more deposit that you put in, the more likely the bank is going to want to lend to you 
because it's a less risk for them because you're actually putting your own blood, sweat and tears into the, um, the house that you're purchasing. So if we go to the different levels of deposit that are required, when I am working with a an advisor that has somebody with credit impairment, whether that be a collection or default um, on their credit check, then you're a bit riskier because you've already had a bit of adverse credit. Um, so we want to have what we call a bit more skin in the game. So we would like you to put 20% deposit down into that property. Now, in some cases, you may not have that 20% deposit. So, you may have 10% um, or 15%. So <clears throat> Zebanuso has um, obviously solutions and opportunities to work with a lot of other lenders. And it, it is an expensive way to do it, but if you wanted to get on the property ladder, you could actually borrow the other five to 10% deposit, um, which would make up to that 80% um, LVR. And again, it's a short term thing. So we could do our loan at the 80% interest only, and you could concentrate on paying off the personal loan um, faster and then when you're in a better position refinance back to the main bank because remember that your equity in your property will be going up as well so you can lend more money and then refinance back to to a main bank lender. I, I have a fantastic um, case study with you guys you've been absolutely superb last December I think it's going to stay with me as my Christmas story for the next however long, um, just around December, a lot of banks were sort of shutting down in terms of lending. They were saying, you know, from the 1st of December, we're not really gonna be accepting any new applications. We, um, we have too many and we need to sort it out before Christmas because all the lawyers are going on holiday, everyone's going on holiday. So we're not gonna really do much. And this couple rang me, it was about a week before Christmas, I think it was around, because um, my birthday is before Christmas, you see, so I remember. Um, and, they rang me up and they said, we've got this opportunity to buy our uncle's home. And um, can we do it? But we need to buy it before Christmas. Like we need to settle pretty much within a week. And obviously all the banks were already shutting down. There was no one that could take them. I rang Rose and Liberty just said, yep, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll have them. So they pretty much um, did everything. We jumped in, we got a Liberty loan. And then um, shortly after, I think after everything opened up, we refinanced back to the main bank so things like this happen as well so don't just think that you know just self-employed or you know if there is some urgency that needs to happen but the banks will take weeks and weeks and weeks because we know the banks are really slow at the moment um do think of other options as well that are out there so um that's one of my stories for you um for your case studies as well rose Thank you. Well, it's a great. I do. I do remember that one. Um, we're here to help. We like. To, we like to help people. Um, we like to help people with their dreams. Um, we, even though we're a non-bank lender, we still have to comply with the um, Credit Contract and Consumers Finance Act. Um, so I think back way back in the past, uh, specialist lenders were known as a bit of like loan sharks or gosh, their interest rates are really, really high. But we're backed by, uh, Liberty are backed by global banks, um, such as Credit Suisse, um, Commonwealth Bank, Deutsche Bank, um, the Macquarie Bank and the Commonwealth Bank in um, Australia, um, National Australian Bank and also Westpac. We also take term, term deposits. Um, so if there's anybody out there that has a lot of money that you're looking for a good investment, uh, Liberty also take the, the term deposits. And I've been helping a lot of first-time buyers to have um, term deposits with you for a short term. Mm -hmm. um, again, because the bank rates are so awful at the moment with the term deposits. And if they've got this chunk of money sitting there and they know they're not going to be buying for the next three to six months, we tend to put them away with liberty as well. So um, I help people with um, term deposits too, by the way. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Uh what, one of the other things that, that I see is um, there's new legislation coming out in the banking industry um, as of the 1st of October, and the bank's criteria are going to get tighter and tighter. Yeah. It's, it's not saying that, um, that we won't, because 
we still are responsible lenders, but I'm already seeing and getting a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls from advisors where the bank have said no, and they're quite surprised. So we still are governed um, by those consumer consumer contract contract acts. So we have to abide by um, by the rules as well. But one of the things I'm seeing with the bank are pushing back at is what, what in um, lender jargon we call age versus stage. Mm. So if you're an, an older client, um, well, it's not old, but I'll just use the example of, of maybe 65 and you're purchasing your own property, what happens is the bank will give you a shorter loan term because they're thinking, crikey, by 70, we would like you out of this debt because you really haven't got a lot of um, working life left in you. So what that means is they'll put it over a shorter term. And it means that your repayments go through the roof. It makes it really expensive. But then in turn, what that does to a lender is it makes the servicing unaffordable. So again, we will look to use a common sense approach. And I'll ask, you know, why are these people at this age of life getting a property? And maybe they've had a marriage separation. Um, and they're starting again. Um, also might be they have a, 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 a good asset position. So if something did happen and everything turned to custard, they do have assets that they could sell down. So we may look to do a 20 year term for those type of people. So we're just not the traditional bank where you're inside the box. And I guess, um, seeing me on here I'm Zevanuso's main point of call where if she's got a, a a curly one she'll ring me and go is there any way that we can work this and there are a lot of different products or categories that um, I can say okay well we're not fitting in the main box at the bank um, but we've got you know 20 different boxes that we could work with. Um, Rose I mean, thank you so much. You've covered pretty much most of my questions that I have here. Um, one of the other questions I've got here, are there um, any extra fees that Liberty would charge versus a bank? So, so good question. Um, we So there is an application fee and the application fee is generally $795. And most of the time that could be added to the borrowing. Um, we also, we don't charge that if your loan doesn't settle. So if you go to Zebanoso and you ask to get a, even a pre-approval, because we do do pre-approvals um, to looking at purchase of property, and you don't go through with the transaction, there is no charge to you. So we only charge that um, if your loan settles and physically you take ownership of the property. The other thing that we always require, and I think it's a good thing for um, the client to get as well, is an, is an extra cost, but we would always want a registered valuation. Mm. <clears throat> and I think it's good to get a registered valuation because you want to know that you are paying market value for that property. And I had an example today where um, this was in, in, in Bacargo where the sale and purchase agreement um, was 300,000. Now the registered valuation has come in at 260. Yes. So that, that can mean two things. It's the buyer was actually buying emotionally and wasn't concerned that the valuation had come in lower than what he was paying. However, I asked the advisor to have a chat to his client because I said, do you realize that he is paying higher market price than what the house is actually worth? And a bank will ultimately use the lower of the, the two, whether it's the registered valuation and the sale and purchase. So in this case, the client has actually got to come up with more deposit now because I'm only going to lend to 90% of the 260,000, not the 90% of the 300,000. But it also means that he hasn't made equity in the house either. And how long, um, what happens if the market goes down, then he's pretty much sitting on 100% lending. That's right. That's if that right. makes sense. So, um, there is the registered valuation cost, but we, we also actually have to provide that to the people that we get our funding lines off. Um, I cannot ever negotiate and so say, no, sorry, um, we can't get away with that. So always need a registered valuation. Um, 
we do have fixed rates and floating rates. And if you, what we call, break your fixed term um, during your loan with Liberty, then yes, there may be a break fee, but we're unable to tell you that until closer to the time. It could be $1, it could be $1,000, but it depends on how much, how long a term that you still have to go and how much money that you actually owe the finance oh, company. <laughs> That same was the banks. The yeah, banks. And, and, and that's and that's pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things I wanted to touch on was interest rates. Um, so our interest rates are higher than the uh, are higher than banks um, because our risk is greater, as you've heard me say, like self-employed and credit impairment. But um, if I if I start to the talking, the, the start of our rates are actually at four point six four. Um, which is not too bad compared to the bank oh, rate. I'm in floating rate at the moment and the bank is 4.45. Mm. And then we go right through to the other end of the scale and that's at 10%. Um, and a loan that I would be looking to do at 10% is um, where we don't actually need to provide any income. So it's called an unregulated loan. And... Um, it needs to be in the name of a trust or a company or for investment purposes. And I do a lot of these with people that are asset rich, but cash poor on paper. So they may be wanting to purchase a property, but they their income doesn't show any servicing for the bank. So it's what we call an asset lend, um, where uh, no questions asked about income. And but for that privilege, um, then the rate is between 10 and 10.5%. And it's designed to be a short-term loan or a stopgap, really. Okay. Um, I've got a question coming through here. If that's okay if we derail a little bit, because we've sure. questioned twice now. Do you offer any property development loans? Very good question. Liberty are more um, standard residential loans. Um, that's that's our, our flavor as just a standard house. So if you were looking for um, development loans um, and depending on um, whether you're talking about developing like five townhouses or just one house and doing it up and flicking it on, that would be a liberty deal. But if you're looking to doing like subdivisions and things like that, then no, that's not liberty. But Zebanoso will have um, access to other, other companies um, of mine there is um, Southern Cross Finance. There are people like um, ASAP. Um, <laughs> Let them come to me and then I'll tell them later. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry, I'm not, yeah, can't do that. Um, but yeah, so so I'm more one to two to three houses. Um, but on the back of that question, I'm hoping I've answered that question for you. Um, so you do some flips, right? So people buy in, um, do a bit of a block series of renovation and then sell. That's you yeah. guys. You can help yeah. with that. But not not subdivisions and things. But just on that as well, it just re um, refreshed my memory on investment lending. So because we're not governed by the Reserve Bank with the LBR restrictions on, um, on investment lending, if you're looking to purchase your first investment, we can actually still look at that with only a 20% deposit. That's fantastic. Okay. Lots of places now need 40%, guys. So um, having 20% investment property, LVR deposit, you get it. Um, that's amazing. And what sort of rates would they be looking at, Rose, if it was an investor? That would depend on where they lie. Uh, um, it would depend on whether the client has um, clear credit or whether they're PAYE and wages or whether um, they are, when I was talking about low doc, self-employed, but that the rate could start at 4.64 at or 4.44 fixed for a year. And of course, we could do it interest only. Okay, perfect. Now, guys, if you've got any questions to ask, please um, put them in the chat bar or raise your hand and we'll come to you and unmute you so you can ask the question in live if you want. Because um, we've got Rose here and she's a wealth of knowledge. As she mentioned before, she's my go-to person. So when you guys call me with your curlies, I go to Rose. <laughs> so, and we have a great, um, great chat about how we can make this work and out of all my BDMs, I hope no one else is listening tonight. Rose is one of my favorites because she's like me. We try to think outside the box. How can we make it work um, for the client? 
So yeah, if you've got any questions, please, please ask them. Um, you've got this opportunity here. Everyone's feeling shy. Everyone's like, oh, don't wanna. Don't wanna. <laughs> you, can, you can send it to me and I can read it out without disclosing your privacy or anything. So uh, maybe, maybe because you covered everything. Now tell me, do you do apartments? Do, does Liberty um, do apartments? That's a bit of, that. there's not such a black and white answer to that. We do do apartments, but it depends on the type of apartment. Um, when, when the GFC hit many years ago, um, Liberty were caught out on apartment lending. It was the first thing that was, um, ended up like being 100, 120% lending. So we have pulled right back on apartment lending. We, we're a wee bit fussy that we, it needs to be bigger than 50 square meters. Uh, can't really be more than three stories high and it needs to be limited to 30 apartments in that complex so it's kind of good luck finding one of those out there and deposit what sort of deposit can they come in to buy that sort of apartment um again 15 percent 15 uh, yeah 15 but again that depends on what whether they're self-employed or a uh -huh. or paya so we treat a lot of um a lot of townhouses that are on unit titles like might be one of eight we treat them as as um, apartment lending and if the client for example was PAYE had a good job um, and it was one of eight townhouses then we could look to go to 85 to 90 percent on that okay because yeah, I mean with most of the apartments uh, at the moment all the banks they they want at least 20 percent mm. uh, it's it's good to know that you guys uh, might be able to help if we fit the criteria yeah okay um there is a question that came in about oh god mm. maori land no sorry <laughs> very good very good question but it's one thing that we don't lend on maori land or leasehold land leasehold yeah that was the next one and cross lease cross lease is fine right yeah, cross lease is fine. Um, we, as long as it's not like one of seven, so we'll go up to one of four cross lease and normally a situation like that is a, generally a shared driveway. Okay. Cool bananas. So um, I think that pretty much covers most of my um, questions, really. We went through nice and sweet, I think. Uh... Do, do, do. yeah that, that covers all my questions and covered a few of the other ones that i'm trying to read okay. um so basically where to from here what happens normally if people want to get along with you can can you please just tell us again they ring you oh true <laughs> <laughs> they ring you um and and um the rings even also and look you know if if liberty are unable to help um zeban also works with many specialist lenders and other non-bank lenders that can help i'm just wanted to basically cover off the specialist lending market and speak for all of us um because we all all look at the same thing and but hopefully she'll be able to main get you through a mainstream bank um, but if she can't, then just wanted to let you know, then there is um, other options. Other options. What are your turnaround times at the moment? Um, so when Zebinoso is meaning turnaround times, that's I'm going to put that in layman's terms. Um, so a turnaround time means when uh, Zebinoso sees you and does a loan application, and then she will send it through to me to assess, and I send it through to my credit team to have a look at, and then they give me a yes, no, or a maybe. So that whole process at the moment would maybe take three to four days. And we can look to do pre-approvals. And we can also do it subject to um, a registered valuation because there's no point in making you go and get a registered valuation um, and pay six to $1,000, $600,000 for registered valuation if there is something in the loan application that we don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I understand. There's a question that came through. Um, Hi, I'm only looking for a small loan to buy a home. A little bit outside my budget range. I'm self-employed and in the same business for 10 years. Uh, 2017-18 were great, about 250-280k income. Mm -hmm. uh, 2019 and 20 hasn't been good. 
can I still borrow? I have a deposit of 1.8 million and I need a top up of about 200K. Is this possible? So um, this person is buying something for 2 million mm -hmm. and they want to borrow 200K. So the first thing that, that I would be looking at, and this I think you would fit into the to the low doc option that I was talking about, and we might need to go offline um, or con contact Zebanoso to ask more questions, but the one thing that I would be guiding Zebanoso to is um, asking if you are obviously currently still trading um, and is the, the income going through your bank statements, are you GST registered? And then I guess one of the key things that, that I do is I work backwards to work out how much you would need to be self-declaring um, through your GST and your bank statements to make sure that the loan would service. So if, for example, if you were only looking at 200000 and you didn't have any other short-term debt, what I would be taking into consideration to work out um, what you'd need to be earning is, um, uh, do you have a partner? Do you have children? Um, what other are uh, your external, um, you might have credit cards or personal loans? Then I would work it backwards. So it sounds like a $200,000 loan. Um, you've got really good equity, um, really, really good deposit. So you could potentially look to do a low doc loan. Now, for example, that rate for you would be 6.39%, which is not out there on a $200,000 loan. Failing that, if you had no income, um, what we could then look at is one of those no doc loans, um, which is the 10% interest rate. But to be fair, you would need an exit strategy as to how you were going to get back to main bank. So I would be trying to look at your GST, if you're GST registered, and your business bank statements um, and doing it that way and providing the accountant's letter. And Zebanoso has a copy of that letter um, to give to um, your, your accountant. And the, the letter is not to drag your accountant and hold them up in court if it all went to custard it's a very loose letter that says um you know dear liberty uh, believe a, a mutual client is applying for um, a loan through your establishment although financial accounts are not available for your perusal it is in my um as in my opinion that rose's self-declared income of eighty thousand is reasonable so it doesn't say this year or last year mm. And what I'm hearing from you with your financials is that your business was doing really well and now it's just gone down a wee bit. Um, so we wouldn't want to look at the financials. We would then low dock it and look at the trading going through your business account. Hopefully that... Um, I'll put in that answer. Hopefully now, that answered your question. That actually reminded me, do you guys have a minimum people can borrow and a maximum people can borrow? We do. We have a maximum of a million dollars. Um, because we're not a big lender like the book, I mean, like the bank, and we don't have millions and millions to lend out, um, we have a what we call a smaller, a smaller pool of money. Um, that we can lend. So if we were lending, say, for example, two million to one person, that's quite a lot of risk for us if the deal to if the deal went um, pear shaped. So we look to limit our lending to about nine hundred and ninety five thousand, um, and our minimum lending amount is um, forty thousand. But cool. we will always need a um, security to lend against. Yeah, yeah, we can't just do personal loans with you guys. No. You guys need to think about it. Great idea, personal loans. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So um, I think that brings us to a close. I don't want to hold you up too late. I understand it's uh, Wednesday night, uh, eight o'clock. Usually, usually Good we. Time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I do appreciate you jumping on my. Um, Welcome. Wednesday talk chat back I hope we can have you back in a few months time and bring us more knowledge and I hope this has been useful to some of our listeners tonight Rose thank you once again thank you so so much appreciate it and um, I bet you'll hear from me soon again you're, you're welcome and thanks thanks very much for everybody there um, hope you all have a lovely evening and I hope this was beneficial to you good night good night everyone Oh yeah, and if everyone, uh, if anyone has any questions specific to me, please feel free to get in touch with me direct. If you just Google my name, I'm sure you'll find me. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone.